Okay. Well, we have a couple people joining us, so we'll go ahead and kind of get started here. Um, just to remind all the attendees, if you haven't uh, attended a training yet this week, um, all the attendees will be muted. We will unmute it, due, depending on the volume, we will unmute at the end for questions if you guys have them. If you guys have any in the meantime, feel free to use the um, question and answer box at the bottom or to use the chat box and we'll kind of respond through both of those. Um, we will start by just kind of running through a couple things. These trainings will be standing trainings every week. So Wednesdays will be admin trainings at 8 a.m. Um, Arizona time or 11 a.m. Eastern time. Coach trainings will take place every Thursday from at, at the same time. So 8 a.m. Pacific time and 11 a.m. East Coast time. And then on Fridays, we'll be doing this in the UDS. We will be sending out notifications if there's updates as to the application. Like for instance, we're hoping in the next couple of weeks to launch our group meeting um, function. So we will provide additional training and resources kind of on that. So I guess with that being said, um, let me go ahead and share my screen and we can get, so I will introduce Dr. Rohde is our Chief Medical Officer and will begin his presentation about best practices for our platform. Well, clarification first, I'm, I'm Chief Clinical Officer rather than Medical Officer. I'm a psychologist rather than a, than a physician. Uh, but welcome to Touch Points of Care. We really hope that we can give you a few ideas on how to make our mobile, mobile app pleasant, engaging, Gosh, we hope it's sometimes going to be fun for you. Uh, we're looking to foster world-class care, and we're hoping to make the provision of that care just as easy as possible and uh, make it pretty cost-effective. Not only is using uh, True Mobile Health cost-effective, it's apt to make money for your organization. Now, that might be seeming like a weird idea. True Mobile Health may be an inexpensive way to increase revenue. Uh, don't hesitate to ask Allison about uh, revenue enhancement after I'm done talking. Now, as I'm speaking, you might, might want to write down a few questions. We'll address those things at the end. If I don't know the answer, I'm sure we'll find somebody on our team who will. Uh, we're sharing these best practices with our customers because the technology is quite new. Uh, we've been developing True Mobile Health now for about uh, three years. And frankly, we did it because the existing products were pretty limited and didn't provide the client engagement experience that we thought was anything close to being optimal. Uh, that being said, there is a bit of a learning curve. No worries. Most of what we'll be talking about will become second nature very quickly. We've gathered a number of best practices, frankly, from our own experiences, but also that of our customers. Uh, we're hoping you'll let us know what works best in, uh, in your setting. There are so many human needs out there. Uh, that we really want to contribute to the welfare of our clients. We know that that's where you're coming from as well. Okay, so who am I? I'm a psychologist. I ran a community mental health center and a residential treatment center a few decades ago. Uh, since that time, I've worked in psych hospitals, outpatient settings. Uh, for a couple of decades, I ran an, an intensive outpatient drug program. Uh, in the 1990s, I was a senior administrator in managed care. My dissertation, though, was written on the use of computer technology to enhance patient care while also improving outcomes. Uh, just based on that fact, you can probably imagine why working with True, Metal, True Mobile Health was such a good fit for me. I joined the team in the first months of operation, and like I said earlier, I'm proud to serve as Chief Clinical Officer. You know, I love technology. Uh, but I'm also aware it's not always easy, sometimes confusing, sometimes baffling, sometimes annoying. Uh, I think we get this training right. Uh, it's likely to be a few of those things. Anyway, objectives today. Let's start with the language we're using, touch point. The touch that I'm talking about is a nurturing behavior. Uh, it's typically a physical connection that communicates care. Uh, but now we're talking about it. Uh, you know, it can be firm or gentle, but the touch of a helping professional has got to be supportive. With an app like True Mobile Health, the touch is both digital and human. Frankly, you're the human. Uh, the key beyond just connecting is engagement. Uh, you know, the back and forth between the supportive worker and the client or patient or member or whatever you call them in your setting. That communication has got to be meaningful, goal-directed, and powerfully productive. Here's the key. 
True Mobile Health can be a tool that facilitates getting clients what they need when they need it. That is the single most important piece of information that I'd like you to remember today. Sometimes our clients can be challenging, sometimes extremely challenging, but acting out is minimized when people get what they need when they need that. I can't emphasize that enough. Okay, how do we do that? In many ways, the, and probably in most ways, your use of the True Mobile Health app will employ exactly the same skills that your previous work with clients did. In some unique ways, the most positive relationships happen when the professional engages in something I'll call social thinking. Uh, this concept of social thinking actually came from work with, uh, with autism, but I think you're gonna find it works well with uh, your population as well. Social thinking is a skill based on the knowledge that the best relationships grow out of a clear understanding of the circumstances that we're in and where the other guy is coming from. It's a matter of modifying our behavior to make the interaction with our client absolutely optimal. If you know that your client just isn't very smart, you will obviously want to simplify your vocabulary or speak more loudly if your client is hard of hearing. <clears throat> if you know that your client is uh, not a morning person, for gosh sakes, don't call them at 8 a.m. You can build a rapport based upon your knowledge of your client. For example, if you know that your client is a fisherman, you might want to use a fishing metaphor, or if they just had surgery, ask how they're doing. We want to ensure that every contact communicates that we value them. We value our clients. But the reality is that some of our clients oh, will be hesitant, perhaps largely unresponsive. Uh, you might want to connect with some of your clients uh, just one out of five times. However, that single contact may be critically meaningful. And because it's online, it required a whole lot less time than it might have required if, you're, uh, if you had to visit your client you know, in, their own, uh, in their own home. Oh. Some clients are apt to need time to adjust to the technology. Uh, since we know that some high-risk clients is moderated to the degree that we're connected with our clients, we need to do everything we possibly can to connect with them. Uh, think for just a moment about the people in your life that you most valued and who most valued you. Chances are they were people who knew your worth, valued your abilities, and believed you were capable of even more. Our clients usually find the best in themselves when others recognize it when we recognize it, when we comment on it. Uh, now think about someone who is always picking at your faults. Uh, did they foster the best in you? No, they were just annoying. We know that a lack of connectedness will increase the amount of risky behavior in our clients. Now think about who you wanna be for your clients. Chances are you wanna be like that influential person in your own life uh, that motivated the best in you. Okay, the app provides uh, different ways for a client to communicate, like emojis, like text, like video, like voice. Uh, because, because people are different and they need to communicate differently, uh, we've got a whole variety of options. Now, one of the things we've been fascinated by is the popularity of the emojis in the app. Uh, it's kind of funny how they uh, communicate a whole lot with a little symbol. Uh, you may want to ask about them. Uh, you know, you just sent me a 100% emoji. What's going on? Or I noticed that you sent me the poop emoji. Help me understand what's happening with you. And beyond great two-way communication, it is resources that can be instantly accessed that are likely to drive independence in your client's behavior. Now, you may want to connect their emotional or behavioral state that you just learned about, either through an emoji, voice, or uh, other kind of call. Uh, if they're sad, you may want to send them a podcast on depression. You might want to suggest a journaling podcast. Um, if they just had a drug dream, uh, you might want to send them a podcast on drug dreams. Uh, get, get them what they need exactly when they need that. Need it. Now, you've probably heard the saying, if you smile, the world smiles with you. Uh, there's some research on that one. If you smile before making a call to a client, you are more likely to perceive the other person in more positive terms, and the other person is more likely to perceive you as potentially helpful. The research was done at the City University in London. Um, 
This is something I'll call a brain trick. Frankly, smile, smiling before you open a call costs you nothing, and it may change your relationship with your client or patient or member. Uh, remember and weave into the conversation some details about them that lets the client know that you see them as an individual and that you remember them beyond just their status as a client. Something like eh, their daughter being a Girl Scout, their having been raised in Brooklyn, or their first employment as an animal trainer. Please think about the person before you make the connection. Picture them and consider their potential. Think about what they need physically and emotionally and how you want them to perceive you. Probably you want them to see you as being helpful and well-informed. You're going to have to be prepared before you get on a call. Remember that you can connect via text, audio call, or video call with unique, with unique advantages to each one of those things. For example, if you suspect that your client is drinking too much, you might want to switch to a video call and check out what they look like. Uh, you may be aware that having eyes with a pinpoint, that is a really small pupil, is often associated with opiate or narcotic use, while wide or dilated pupils might suggest meth, coke, or hallucinogens. Um, red eyes are often associated with marijuana, cocaine, benzos, or alcohol. Now, it is sometimes said that a little knowledge is a dangerous thing. Please don't accuse someone of being under the influence if they have well, dilated pupils. Uh, they could simply have elevated intracranial pressure. If you wonder about their living environment, check out the, uh, the background in a video. Or maybe you want to ask for a video tour of their house. Uh, if they seem embarrassed, uh, maybe you want to see it the next time. Uh, and it, perhaps it'll motivate them to do a bit of house cleaning. Okay, you will be notified on the app when a client completes an activity. That'll give you a perfect opportunity to reach out and celebrate their progress. It also gives you a great chance to check their status and perhaps some, suggest some information that your agency just recently uploaded to the resources at, tab. Uh, you can do that. If you have some handouts, some, uh, some video that you want us to upload, just ask us. Now, since the whole idea behind our efforts is self-empowerment, you will probably want to let them know at least weekly about the array of resources they can access. Now, this is a time when you might send the message that says, you know, good job with the completion of, you know, whatever activity. Don't forget group therapy this afternoon. Uh, you might want to check back and check out the new resource that we've got on frustration management on the resources tab. Let me know if I can help with anything. Every message needs to communicate hey, we're here for you. Uh, now you do that anyway with your clients when you're face to face. Now you'll do it within a, a digital format. When you begin with a client within the True Mobile Health app, it's important to set expectations. Again, you do this ordinarily anyhow. You know, boundaries, a little bit different boundaries perhaps with the app though. Um, let them know that how often you'll communicate, uh, the importance of being active in their own care advocating for themselves, uh, the goal of autonomy, and perhaps the ultimate goal of independence. The expectations should be both for the client as well as yourself. Probably you ought to let them know that you'll respond uh, to text messages, you know, as soon as you can, but certainly within 24 hours, and uh, give them your work hours. Uh, it goes without saying that expectations without accountability is probably impossible. Now on the left side of the screen, make engagement a priority at every level and for every client, regardless of their apparent needs. This may seem counterintuitive, but recall the data that suggests that low priority clients have the potential to become high risk clients without your attention. Remember that you're critically important to their care. The information and services that you provide are apt to make the difference between a successful suicide and a chance at a happy life, or the difference between a drug relapse or movement toward recovery. Now, over the years, I've worked with hundreds of clients who have been suicidal and certainly thousands of addicts. Uh, it is care and availability that typically make the difference. Remember the human aspect. The reality is that some of our clients just be, won't be very responsive. Uh, leave supportive messages anyway. Encourage responsiveness. 
don't give up. Now, with the challenges that many of our clients have got, it's tough to be positive, but stay positive and not in a superficial way. That'll be a complete turnoff. Uh, think for a moment about the people who've been most helpful in your life. Uh, they were there for you. We know that our clients can be tough and they need accountability. Uh, consider saying something like, uh, Jack, miss seeing you in group today, rather than, why weren't you in group? Uh, the truth is, we don't want to know why. We just want them in group counseling. When there's been a lack of contact for a while, you may want to say something like, uh, hey, sorry, we've not been able to connect. Just wanted you to let you know that I'm here for you uh, whenever you're ready. I recognize at some point, a more confrontational message might be useful. Something like, Melissa, I'm really concerned that your lack of check-ins might result in your being dropped from the program. Please, please give me a call. Okay, uh, the app serves as a daily or a weekly reminder. Well, probably, I hope they're looking at it every day. Uh, and in psych, psych language, we talk, these, talk about these things as being external memory devices. Uh, an external memory device is a way to remember something that's not, not internal to your brain. In this case, it's on the app. And when they see a task on the uh, opening page of the app, well, they may recognize that they need to uh, do all of those things. Now, two reasons why we want people to follow the wellness plan that we've identified on the app. Certainly, it'll promote more functional behavior. And if it's done consistently, they're likely to form a positive habit. Now, those positive habits, the biologic basis for that is something I'll call a neural pathway. Uh, you guys are perhaps familiar that uh, the brain's kind of like a computer with plenty of, uh, plenty of wires. And when you use the same circuitry over and over again, regardless of whether it's a uh, uh, shoe, tie shoe tie or getting along with uh, uh, your wife or doing quadratic equations, the more you use the circuitry, uh, the better it gets uh, in a neurologic sense. In effect, we put something called myelin on those neurons, and that, well, that myelin functions kind of like an insulator uh, that's on a wire. The more myelin, the more likely it is that that circuitry can be used over and over again, and the more likely it is that positive habits will be the, uh, the result. Okay, um, best practices. A couple of points on teamwork. In most settings, our clients have access to something of a, a network of support. Don't hesitate to reach out to that network when a client's needs demand it. Uh, make certain in your notes and your charting uh, that it'll give your team members access to the information that will promote the right kind of care. And remember that your client is a critical part of that team. Unfortunately, many of our clients have challenges that have impacted their, their mental abilities, uh, you know, expect you're going to probably have to provide, provide them with small steps with frequent uh, contact uh, in order for them to be successful. Some might need a pat on the back after each small step. Some might need a pat on the back even when they're thinking about taking the first step. You need to be their biggest fan. Don't let an accomplishment happen without its acknowledgement unless your client can't stand praise. Uh, those people do exist. Uh, think about using what I'll call secondhand praise. Uh, if you have a release that allows communication with a partner, a spouse, a parent, letting those people know of an important accomplishment can be especially powerful. The client will get the benefit of the additional praise, but you're also likely to be raised in their esteem because you made them look good in the eyes of their partner, their parent. In a similar way, repeating praise from another member of the team will also likely double its impact. Uh, I would suggest personalizing your message whenever you can. Uh, use the person's first name you know, several times during the, during the call. If your client has a nickname that they like, ask if you can use it. Uh, there's some research indicating that use of a nickname actually raises self-esteem. Okay, the relationship between you and your client is partly digital and may seem artificial. But the frequency of contact that you can have with an online client can be a multiple of what is true for a client seen for home visits or at the office. I'd encourage you to emphasize your connectedness with friends, phrases like, it was good to connect with you, uh, glad we could link up, 
or I'm looking forward to having you join the support group, or I hope we can unite in getting this done. Think about it. People who feel connected to others no longer feel isolated. Feelings of isolation are a huge risk factor. Your contact might be daily, several times a week or weekly, but stay in touch. You may want to schedule the next contact so they know what to expect. Uh, people generally like looking, like having something to look forward to. You might want to send information and resources ahead of time uh, so you can discuss it. Uh, Jake, let's talk about this tomorrow at the 11 a.m. I'll send the resource, be well. Video calls are an awesome way to see how your client is doing. It clearly supports a person-centered approach and can give you an insight into their hygiene or their sobriety. Uh, you're likely to pick up on the orderly, orderliness of their environment. Uh, look for those things. We earlier talked about celebrating success. I would do it with a great deal of regularity because it typically pays off. If you get a negative reaction to your, your celebration of their success, check out why. And uh, be sensitive because sometimes they may feel something like, you're just saying those things because you're my paid counselor and you're supposed to make me feel good. Now understand, it's the message they give themselves about praise rather than your message that, uh, that has the impact. And if every time you say, uh, boy, you did a great job on that, and the client ends up saying to themselves, no, they're just saying that because they know I'm a schmuck. Uh, you're probably not doing them any good. So you may want to minimize praise if in fact they're taking it paradoxically. The whole idea be behind sending a resource is that we're hoping to foster independence. If they can build their own skills without us, they're likely to feel really, really good about that. Obviously the resource, the handout, the podcast, you know, whatever has to be relevant and within their ability to use. The whole idea behind True Mobile Health is making care more accessible, uh, getting people the support they need when they need it. I said that earlier. That is the single best way to fix things and get things on track. You know, be as, be as proactive as you can. If you can, get ahead of the curve. When you think about client care, look at the glide path or the direction of their behavior. Now try to anticipate their needs and provide the support they need well, when they need them or before the need becomes critical. Yeah, you know, we'd like to be able to head off disasters uh, whenever we can. Okay, we're about to, to summarize. The app is designed to increase connections to supportive care, supportive care from people who care. Any increase in an access to care is likely to lead to greater confidence, a sense of security and long-term benefits for the client. The availability of video, audio, messaging, even emojis as a way of connecting respects the individual differences in the client. Clients get care in a comfortable setting. Many times it's their own home. The idea of a wellness plan in the palm of your hand makes it really easy for them to stay on track and really easy for you to hold them accountable. The availability of online resources can significantly enhance the possibility of self-regulation and empowerment. Now the increased contact uh, could lead to better supportive connections, a better relationship and a whole lot of trust. You know, with an online connection like we've got, you're likely to be able to see your client a whole lot more frequently than you might if you were doing home visits or if they were coming into your office. Uh, we can provide uh, more engagement, more support, more trust. Uh, we have more options for care simply due to its convenience. And we can be culturally sensitive uh, because we have an increased ability to address their needs and their requests. We hope we're using the True Mobile Health app. You're going to have greater opportunities for accountability and to celebrate their success. We all need to encourage that ownership of success. Few do's and don'ts. Uh, for God's sakes, be available. Uh, be there when you say you're going to be there. Usually that's an eight to five, unless you've agreed to extended hours. Uh, but be careful of the, uh, well, not setting boundaries. You know, if you answer your phone and respond to a client at 11.30 p.m., you're gonna create an expectation that you might not want. We hope that your agency has some after-hour support services that you may encourage your clients to, uh, to use. Do be sure that your clients know how to reach emergency services when you're not available. 
uh, chances are they're on uh, a support tab on your uh, on your True Mobile Health app or on their True Mobile Health app. Uh, do be responsive, timely, positive. Have clear expectations and do be, be prepared and be positive, be proactive. Uh, please do avoid any failure to respond to their calls or needs and remember that their requests for contact are documented. You or your agency may have some liability if you don't respond in a timely manner. Uh, don't wait until it's too late. Don't hesitate to empower. Never pass on the opportunity to enhance your connection to your client. And lastly, please, please, please give us ideas on how to make the True Mobile Help app better because uh, that's going to benefit everybody. Uh, appreciate your attention. Uh, I think we're open for questions. All right, perfect. Um, if you guys do have any questions, if you want to put them in the chat feature, or actually I could, um, give me just a second, I could stop. Um, I am going to give everyone permission to talk. So if you guys do have any questions, um, feel free to ask Dr. Rohde. Give you guys a second to kind of get that together. Thanks for presenting that, especially right now with the social distancing. I think the application's a great opportunity to kind of connect with our clients that are probably feeling a little anxious, a little overwhelmed with what's going on. Um, you know, everyone is adapting to the new world we're kind of forced to live in, and we're hoping our application provides some tools and resources that these clients can use during this time. So is there, it doesn't look like there's any questions for Dr. Rohde, so I will hop in really quick, um, unless Ronnie or anybody has anything to add before I do it. Um, one thing we did want to touch base on, and I may ask uh, Brandy, not to put you on the spot here, but to talk about a little bit about how Higher Power is using this. Um, our company is offering at-home DNA drug and alcohol testing kits. Um, we have a couple clients that are using this, um, Hired Power definitely being one of them. Um, what this does is gives you an opportunity to remotely monitor your clients at home. These kits are mailed directly to their home. Uh, the test for over 100 different drugs and alcohol and has a sensitivity for testing within five to seven days of use for alcohol and cocaine. So substances that typically metabolize very quickly. Um, it's actually pretty easy. We put instructions in them. We made it simple enough that my 12-year-old daughter could use it. Um, they receive it, so they take the oral swab, complete that on video using the True Mobile Health app or in front of somebody that is trusted to make sure the DNA will match the urine. Um, they drop a urinary drug screen sample off video. We always have to note that because that usually becomes a question. Um, and then once they do that, they simply have their sample in the cup, place the vacutainer, and it auto fills to what the client needs for the sample. Um, once that's done, they send pre um, paid package shipping back to the lab. So that goes overnight to our lab. Within 24 to 32 hours, they have results for the toxicology component, which also includes synthetic urine. Um, and from there, it is within another 24 hours or so is DNA confirmed that it is that client's. Um, with this right now, not having accessibility and patients having anxiety about going to a lab, um, it seems to be pretty well received. I don't know if Brandy wants to jump in and share any client experiences that she's had. Sorry to put you on the spot, Brandy. That's all right. Good morning. Um, the great thing about it for us, we started with some of our clients that were in college and, you know, in a dorm setting and didn't have um, accessibility to a car you know, different things like that. So it fit the, it fit the needs for that clientele. It was incredible. Um, and now obviously going into um, COVID, we are using it with the majority or a lot of our clients and it's increasing the compliance and it's increasing, um, you know, we're, we're recommending twice a week. The fact that it is testing for alcohol with like a 96 hour window we can do it twice a week and cover everything. We really liked it initially too, because it showed uh, like for Kratom, we had had an issue with Kratom and some of those synthetics and to be able to test for over a hundred different um, items or uh, substances in one test at the same fee was off the charts for us. And so we're really excited about it. We're excited about the interaction that we have with the lab and the reports that we get, it's been a very positive um, experience overall, but truly just providing this level of support for our clients that need that accountability has been um, something we're very pleased with. 
Great. Thank you so much, Brandy, and I appreciate bringing up Kratom specifically. Um, most 12 panel cups in an office setting or a point of service cup isn't going to catch things like Kratom. And I know from my personal experience with the medically assisted treatment, um, when that doesn't show how you treat them could, you know, ultimately cause med additional medical issues or put them into a severe withdrawal. So I do appreciate you mentioning that. So if you guys have any questions about that, feel free to reach out to us. Um, any of us on this, Ronnie, Mark, um, and Zach. So if you guys have questions about how to deliver this care, additional resources, things like that, I am finalizing for this version of this week, the billing guide. Um, I know I owe it to a couple already. So we will have a this week's final version that is changing by the minute. So if you have questions on billing in specific states about peer support, things like that, you know, we, we do have a guide and some information for COVID and back to what the laws look like prior to COVID. So, all right, well, thank you guys all for joining this morning. Um, hope you guys all have a great weekend and stay safe. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.